And then Saturday morning, we're going visiting at 9.30. We had, we had some good visits yesterday. We had visits yesterday of people that were so glad to see um, us, and we prayed with them and talked to them. You can still say, listen, you can stay as far away from people visiting as you can going in that dollar store or the post office or the grocery store or anywhere else you go. And you can do it in here too. You, actually, we're a lot further in here than we would be if we was at the dollar store tonight. So uh, uh, come go visit Saturday morning. Lord bless you for it. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter number one. Ephesians chapter number one. And I want to look at one verse of scripture and bring you a message tonight. Verse three, chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. Look at that. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I have been, for the last few months, once in a while, taking a, yep, on this one, just a tad, Caitlin, um, a, a famous hymn of the church and preaching a sermon on it. I, I want to do that for a long time. And I've done it three or four times. This will be another one tonight. And I want to use that blessing word there. God's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. And would like to preach tonight on this subject, Count Your Blessings. Everybody here learned that song as a child, I'm hoping. Maybe in Sunday school, maybe in Bible school. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what? What the Lord hath done. Now, the Bible is, is backs that song up, and that's where it comes from, probably these verses and these verses like that. Another great hymn, written by a preacher. It's amazing how many of them old great songs are written by preachers. Johnson Oatman, Jr. He was born in 1856, April 21st, in Manford, New Jersey. John, uh, Johnson Oatman became a preacher at the age of about 19 or 20 and began preaching in the Methodist church. He, and he got his uh, love for music from his dad and church music. Let me say that again for all of you people that are listening at home. He got his love for church gospel music from his dad. That's important for you daddies to remember. And uh, he had singing talents of his father and he preached and wound up writing almost 5,000 texts for him. Not the music, but the words to it. Other songs that this same man wrote, you might recognize. One of them is Higher Ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Wrote that song. And then the other one he, that you will recognize he wrote is No, Not One. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our trouble. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not wrote those words. And this song is probably his most well-known song. Count Your Blessings first appeared in printed form in 1897. It's been sung all over the world, this great song has. And it has, uh, during the great Welsh revival in London and England, they said during this great revival, while the Spirit of God was being poured out, people being saved by the thousands, that grown men went around singing it, young boys went up and down the streets whistling it, and women rocked their babies to sleep at night, singing it to them. That's how well known this great song was. It's got four verses. I'll take these four verses and make just quick comments on them, and I'll be through. Verse 1 says, When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Boy, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? All right, you ready? Uh, uh, hit that number one. Now, but when I tell you to hit it, here's the words. When you're on, upon life's billows, you're tempest-tossed. You've been tossed on billows of light. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, 
Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it'll surprise you what the Lord has done. Get it good and loud. Sing it with them if you want to. Here's the first verse. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your blessings. it with them. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. God been good to you. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Thank you. Now listen. I'm here to cheer you up tonight, y'all. I'm here to say glory to God. It could be a lot worse. God's been good to us. God's been good to us. The Lord's blessed me. The Lord's blessed me. The Lord's blessed me. I can't even count that high of how many blessings God's blessed me with. And if you'd be honest tonight, he'll bless you. You know what the devil will do? The devil will make you look at all the bad that's going on. All this ain't right. That ain't right. The sink leaks. The the car had a flat tire. And all that might be true. I mean, when all you're on life's billows, you were tempest tossed. But I'll tell you one thing. You start counting them blessings. You start looking at how good God's been to you. You start looking at how you've been blessed. It won't be long until something will bubble up in your soul and say, glory to God, it ain't as bad as I thought it was. Woo! Hallelujah, it's good to be saved. Count you many blessings. Name them one by one. You know what's wrong with us here in America? And all you folks watching at home, on abroad, here in America, we are spoiled rotten. We ought to be counting our blessings. Lord have mercy. I I heard uh, Ralph Sexton telling uh, about a trip he made to uh, South Korea. And they were having a meeting over there. And Brother Ralph, you know, has a a worldwide ministry, tremendous uh, ministry. And God used him all over the world. And Ralph said he, he back in 2015 he went over to South Korea to preach. He said uh, uh, he met the pastor, and he said the pastor told him he said now you get up and get ready in the morning. He said I'll be able to pick you up at 4:30. He said 4:30 in the morning. He said that's right, I'm going to church. And Ralph said you're kidding me, right? He said 4:30 in the morning. On Monday morning, I think it was. And Ralph said he said he went up, he got dressed, he said he waited on the pastor. Pastor come and picked him up. He said they went oh, drove over out of where that big old building where they was gonna have a series like a crusade every night that week. He said, They ain't gonna meet me and the pastor and a couple of more will be here. He thought it was like America, you know. Uh, he thought me and the pastor and a couple of more will be here. He said he went in that building, he said there were three thousand people sitting in that building. Five o'clock in the morning. He said, my Lord. And he said they were praying. He said they got down and prayed. They were thanking God. He said they were they were praising the Lord all over that. And then that, when that service is over, the pastor said, now, uh, before the six o'clock service, would you like to come up to my office and have tea? And he said, I reckon. And so he went up to the, up, uh, up to the pastor's office and had tea. And he said, well, now the six o'clock service, there'll be more people here. And Ralph said, what? He said, uh, how? He, saw, he said, I can't understand this. He said, it's blowing my mind. He said, at 6 o'clock that morning, there were between five and 6,000 people gathered in that place. I'm talking, are you listening to me? 6 o'clock in the morning. Five, between five and 6,000 people sitting in there, all of them excited and, gre- and ready to pray. And Ralph said after that, uh, he said, now, he said, finally, he said, I, he said, I just couldn't, I couldn't wait no more. He said, I had to ask him. He said, what are you doing these people? Are, are you offering them something? Are they going to win something? Are they going to get <laughs> something free or something like that? Uh, and he, he said, no. And he said, that pastor, look at him. And he said, uh, Ralph, are you a Christian? He said, well, yes, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm here from America to preach this meat. He said, uh, do you love the Lord? He said, well, yeah. I thought I did. <laughs> I love the Lord. He said, uh, hadn't God been good to you? And he said, yeah. He said, "It just it, did you wake up this morning? 
He said, yes, I did. And he said, well, don't you think that it's, you ought to give God the first hour or two of every day that God is so good that he'd let you wake up? That God is so good that he'd let you be alive? And, Bill, and Ralph said, have you got a table or a chair somewhere I can crawl up underneath here and get right with God? Uh, he said, listen, we are so spoiled in America. Let me ask you something, people. Did you wake up this morning? Yes, you did. I mean, that didn't happen for a lot of people. Could you walk? Could you think? Are you alive? Glory to God. I'm telling you, it, he made it. He, we made it. I'm going to tell you something else about this year we're going through too. Uh, 2020 has been a bad year but God brought us through 2019 and God brought us through 2018 and 2017 and 2016 and 2015 and 14 and 13 and 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, 2000, 19, 99, 98, 97, 96. God brought us through all them years and if God Almighty brought us through them years, you can count on him. He'll bring us through 2020. We ought to just stop and count our blessings and stop. You know what? Uh, you know, it's healthy to praise God, y'all. I'm not saying you'll never get sick. I might be bad off sick tomorrow. I'm not saying that. But it's healthy to praise God. It's healthy to raise your hands and say, thank God. Hallelujah. God's been good to me. Count your blessings. It'll surprise you what the Lord's done. Now, verse number two. Verse number two says this. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy that you have to bear, call to bear, count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Let's hear that one, Caitlin. Verse 2, listen to this. Does the cross seem heavy that you call to bear? Count your blessings. will fly. We'll be singing as the days go. Sing, everybody. Count your blessings. Sing them one by one. Woo! Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Well, that verse says this. Are you ever burdened? With a load of care? Yes, sir. Sometimes we get very burdened. Sometimes the cross seems heavy that we're called to bear. You know what your cross is? Your cross is something that you deliberately take up and carry just because you love the Lord. Your cross is not a, a bad back. Your cross is not a, 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 a broke leg. Your cross is not uh, something that you can't help. Your cross is something that you can help and choose not to. Your cross isn't something like, well, I can, I'm poor. That's my cross to bear. No. Uh, you, you say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm crippled. That's my cross. No. Your cross is something where your real ones run away and God's will runs the other way and you deliberately pick it up and follow the Lord because you love him. Does the cross you carry seem too heavy to bear? Sometimes it seemed awful heavy. There's been times when I've, there's been times when I thought, Lord, I don't know if I can make it through this. I guarantee you there's somebody listening to me tonight right here this evening or out there abroad. I guarantee you there's people hearing my voice right now that's at the point where you think, I just don't know if I can carry this load. I just don't know if I can make it through this, Lord. I just don't know if I can go, Lord. It just seemed like more than I can bear. Count your blessings. You start counting them blessings. You start thinking, oh, God's been good to me here. God's been good to me there. I made it through that last time. I made it through that other time. I made it through that burden back yonder somewhere. I made it over that, over that hill back there years ago. The same God that brought me over them hills will be the same God that brought me over this hill. I told a boy the other day, his wife had left him and he's about to die. And I, I talked to him for a while and he said he's hurting, you know, and everything. I said, brother, uh, you know, in so many words, count your blessings. God's been good to you. God's been good to you. You just let a day turn into a week and a week turn into a month and a month turn into a year and you run, raise up your hands. Uh, you, you run the aisles one, a time or two and you get out get out in the morning in your front yard. I did this the other day out on my porch. I guess people thought I was crazy. Uh, and I, I don't know if my, my daughter and grandson was down there but I don't have no neighbor except Miss B 
down there. And I got out there and I just put my hands up like that toward the sky. And I just stood there and started thanking the Lord. Hey, people say, oh, if I did that, people think I was crazy. No, they're the ones that's crazy. You get out there and raise your hand toward heaven and praise God and it'll surprise you what the Lord hath done. It sure will. It will surprise you what the Lord hath done. I, I looked at it like this. Hey, I, just, I just wrote these things down just right off the top of my head. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning and I didn't wake up in pain. I didn't wake up in misery. I didn't wake up to, a, to my house on fire. I woke up. I can see. I can see. My eyes are working today. Have you shouted because your eyes are are all right today. Hey, if you lost them a day or two and got them back, you'd shout when they come back. I, I've never lost my eyesight. What a shout about that. If you can see, glory to God. Woo! I can see. I can see. I can see. I can touch. I can touch. I can taste. I tasted that hamburger from cookout she brought me today. What a blessing to have a wife that takes a big dinner like that on a Sunday evening. That's right. I thank God for it. I can taste. I can hear, I can hear. I listen to the singing. I listen to my gold fingers play the piano a while ago. I listen to preaching today on, on, the, on the radio. I can hear, I can feel, I can think. I can think, Lord of God. There's a lot of people who can't think. Oh, wait a minute. You're gone, man, unchecked out. I'm glad we can think, Lord of God. Ain't you glad you can think? Ain't you glad you can figure? Ain't you glad you know how to deduct your tithes? Ain't you glad you can know how to, by the way, you know, all you people that's out and gone on vacation for about several weeks, you ought to have a wad. You better have a wad or you're stealing. I, I can feel, I can think, I can pray, I can pray, I can pray. What a blessing. I can, I can walk. I can walk. I can walk. There's a man in the Bible who couldn't walk and the Lord touched him and he went walking and leaping and praising God. You know why you ain't thank God you have what you can walk? Because you ain't had to do without it. Uh, brother, don't wait till you live without it before you praise God for it. Thank God you can walk. Thank God, brother, we can go to church. Thank God we can go to church. Thank God we can go to church. I got a, I got a, a text from a, a friend of mine in Maryland uh, today. He said today is the first day that we've been allowed to go back in our churches. Today, can you imagine that? Glory to God, I'm glad we ain't missed one service right here at Shining Light Baptist Church. Not one. No, not one. I'm glad we can go to church. I'm glad I can read the Bible. I'm glad I got the right Bible, and I'm glad I know how to read. I learned how to read when I was six, seven years old, and I can read. I can see my family. I can see my wife. Discouraged on your burden. Oh, see, you can get me on another microphone. Just the pulpit mic. Amen. <whistles> well, I'll be. There's something in it now. Ain't that something? Well, I'm glad I can see my family. I'm glad I can uh, digest food. Amen. I'm glad I can digest food. What a blessing it is to be able to eat. Sometimes we eat because we really need it and sometimes we eat just for the fun of it. Amen. That's what we're going to do in heaven. Eat for the pure enjoyment of it. You won't be hungry. It'll just be fun to eat, brother. All we want. I, I'm glad I have food. I'm glad I have food in my house. My sis, uh my sister was here this morning. She brought some stuff. Joey was here this morning, brought us some squash. And we got bread at home. And we got ice cream in the freezer. And I got me some Pepsis. And, brother, I got all the health or organic food that keeps you, keeps you going. And I've got uh, my house. I thank God for my house. It ain't new. It's old in a lot of ways. It's a double-wide mobile home with an A-frame built on it. I bought, bought, 1979 but thank God it's my house it, God give it to me and it's paid for and I praise God for it I'm glad brother I've got a, a, a car amen 
to several of them. They've got a million miles on them, but I've got a car. I'm glad I got a job, amen. I'm glad I got a job to do for God, and I can do it by the grace of God. I'm glad I got clothes to wear. I'm glad I got clothes. Can't you bless him? I'm glad there's air that we can breathe. I'm glad there's water that we can drink. I'm glad we can sleep when we get tired. I'm glad we can rest when we're wore out. I'm glad not to mention our salvation from hell. And brother, you can shout and praise God for a million years just from saving you from hell. Got your blessings, ain't you? Got your blessings. Not to mention, brother, and, and by this stuff, all this stuff I'm talking about, money can't buy some of this stuff. Forgiveness, help, hope. Money can't buy that. Let's get in verse number four. Verse number four, if it, is it home? I will try it here in a minute. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, is I, am I right? Verse number three. Verse number three. When, at, look, when we look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings. Money cannot buy your reward in heaven nor your home on high. Go ahead. Hit it. Number three. When you look at others with their lands and gold, Think that Christ has promised and wealth untold. Count your many blessings. Money cannot buy. All right, we ready? Everybody. God's been good. Thank you. Now, it's easy here in this country to look and see the prosperity of the wicked. It really is. That's one of the worst things about TV. If all you do is sit around and watch TV, you will, you will think you're the most pitiful person in the world and everybody drives a Rolls Royce and wears evening gowns and, and sits in moonlit pool parties and eats steak and lobster all the time and you're pitiful. That's, that's the impression they give you. Everybody's rich, everybody's good looking, everybody's beautiful, everybody got everything they want. If all you do is sit around and watch soap operas and primetime TV, you ain't gonna have a lick of sin. You know what? The Bible said don't envy the wicked. Don't envy the wicked. I'm telling you tonight, not, there is not, and I'm not lying when I say this. Everybody listen to me at home. There is not one movie star in Hollywood that I'd trade places with here tonight. Not one, not one. I'm not trying to sound spiritual. I mean that. I feel sorry for them. Bless their heart. They wind up in them old mansions. I've seen them mansions. Hey, I've been all over Hollywood. And we drove all over, and they'd say behind that big wall, they all got walls around their house, by the way. They believe in walls and police protection for them. And, uh, uh, they, they got big old walls and um, they, 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 they live in them big old mansions got vines all over them and they got a guard out front and a big, uh, big Doberman pincher about that big, you know, or a German shepherd or something and they're sitting in there, uh, in there and they're watching TV and their wrinkles are coming on them and they're drinking liquor and they're saying, I hate them, I hate them because they used to be popular uh, 30 or 40 years ago and now they're just a withered up old hag that with nothing, no, can't get a job, uh, can't get no power in a movie and going to die without God and go to hell. Uh, don't envy that, people. Don't envy that. Listen, there's people up there in spruce pine and them mountains, brother, that's worked hard all their life, got their house paid for, got money in the bank, kids are saved, grandkids are saved, they all come to mama's on Sunday afternoon for chicken dinner, go back to church on Sunday night and die and go to heaven, brother. That's the kind of life you want, amen. Hallelujah, brother. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. I, are, you living, are you living with a wicked husband? I know there's people living with a husband that treats them wrong. I know there's men that live with a wife that treats them wrong. I know there's people that, uh, that, people are, that are suffering. Let me tell you, it is an honor to suffer for the Lord's sake. You sit down at night and count your blessings. Name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Now, verse number four. Verse number four, quote, so amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend, help and comfort give you 
till your journeys end. Go ahead. Lock down. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged. God is over all. Woo! Count your men. Angels will attend. Help and comfort get you till your journey. Everybody. Amen. studying this this week, I was, I was running another morning and I sang this song all the way down the road and all the way back. That's a happy little tune, y'all. Don't you think we need a little bit of that in this generation? Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And, and you, do that, you do that while you're washing the dishes. You say, I hate washing dishes. You ought to thank God that you got food to put on them dishes and make them dirty. You better thank God you got a family that'll dirty them clothes you got to wash. Amen? In the middle of the battle, don't be discouraged. They said years ago, uh, back, back in the old days when people before cars, this horse, that, uh, somebody had a horse, and it fell into this big old open mine shaft. And there it was down in there. And it li like a big well is what it was. And barely the horse got down in there, and all the men got out and said, how in the world are we going to get it out? And they said, well, I tell you what, uh, there ain't no way to get that thing out. We might as well just bury it and fill that well up at the same time and we'll just drown, just bury him alive. He's going to die anyway and fill up the well and we'll kill two birds with one stone. That won't happen again. So they all started getting shovels and shoveling in there on top of that horse. And when he did that, he started moving around, jumping like that, and, they, and he got up on top of it like that, and they shoveled more dirt in. He got up on top of it like that, and they kept shoveling more dirt in, more dirt in, more dirt in. And he kept getting on on top of it like that, and he kept getting higher and higher and higher and higher. Finally got up the top and just run out and took off. And you know what he'd done? Uh, they kept shoveling in the dirt on him. He kept getting on top of it. I uh, run it down. And this old world, they shovel a lot of dirt on us. They try to tell, talk bad about us. They tell, call us everything. You know what me and you do? We just count our blessings. Just shake off the dirt. I mean, brother, you just kick it off. It won't be long till you'll be walking out right on top of it. Don't let the world get you down. Don't let them cover you up in their old dirt. Don't let them tell you God's not real. Don't let them tell you the Bible's not true. Don't let them tell you that we don't have a hope. Don't let them tell you you're crazy for believing this. They ain't got nothing like what me and you've got to believe in tonight. Count your blessings. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Cross the finish line. As I said this morning, we may be the very generation that gets to carry the ball across the finish line. We may be it. A little girl had a disease and she was dying. As a matter of fact, the doctor said she'll never live through the night. She'll not make it through the night. The mama came in and she sat down beside her and the little girl was in such pain. And you know, when you're really sick and you're really hurting, ain't nothing much else, ain't much. And the mama said, honey, just think. The doctor says you're going to heaven. Honey, you'll hear the beautiful singing up there. As soon as you get there, you'll hear the beautiful singing. She said, Mama, I don't want to hear no singing. I'm so sick, I can't stand the thoughts of no singing. Mama, I don't want to hear it. She said, but honey, think about this. She said, it won't be but just a little while you'll see the streets of gold and you'll get to walk on the streets of gold. She said, Mama, I don't care about the streets of gold. I'm hurting so bad. Streets of gold don't mean nothing to me. And, and, she, and she said... Honey, would you want me to just hold you in my arms? And the little girl said, yes, that's what I want. That's what I want. She said, will Jesus just hold me in his arms? And she said, yes, honey, he will. She said, that's what I want. That's what I want. And you know what? I mean, I'm looking forward to streets of gold and all the beauties of heaven and everything. But brother, this whole world, sometimes you just want to think, if Jesus just hold me, if he'll just hold me in his arms. And I know he don't literally come down here and grab us up physically like that. 
But it's good to know, so I tell you, I felt like sometimes he just wrapped a big arm around me and said, hang in there, Danny. It ain't gonna last forever. It's gonna get better. It's, it's a better day ahead. And I'm glad to say hallelujah, like the song said, so amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings. Angels will attend. Help and comfort give you till your journeys end. I'm here to tell you tonight, thank God those angels of God will be with us till our journey's over, people, till our journey's over. When we cross the river, when we cross the finish line, the angels will be there when our journey's end. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Come on, Miss Daisy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. She's playing softly tonight. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. The devil is an expert at making you not see all the blessings of God on your life. If you think about it, you've been blessed. Let's come and pray. If you want to come and pray tonight, come on. If you want to stay there at your seat and pray, that's fine. Just